Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. And today's BS series topic is that carbs cause fat gain. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. So really quickly, the propensity for a nutrient taken in to cause the creation of new body fat is called its adipogenesis or adipogenic ability. And all the three macronutrients, fats, carbs, and proteins can actually be ranked on average by the degree to which they are adipogenic, the degree to which they lead to the likelihood of fat storage, all other things being equal. And fats are by far the most adipogenic, and this is for the straightforward reason that they require almost no biochemical modification. So they arrive, they're very uh, scantily modified. They can be highly modified or they cannot, and then they get stored into fat cells and voila, right in they go. Carbs are next. Their conversion to fat requires a few chemical steps, but not so many, and it's quite an easy process. And so they're not quite as likely to make you fat as are fats, but uh, pretty close. And then a little further down that list are proteins. Proteins are uh, sure adipogenic if you eat enough of them, but in some cases, in some situations, the conversion of amino acids to the uh, sort of intermediate products that are eventually used to construct fats and thus store away that energy as fats is a little bit, maybe considerably more difficult, considerably more laborious, considerably more complicated. And there are all a bunch of steps in that pathway that may not get done to a certain degree of efficiency. So the proteins end up being not as adipogenic. Mind you, I'm very, very clear about this. Proteins, carbs, and fats are very similar to each other and their adipogenicity under some conditions and some special circumstances, they can be very different, but usually they're very similar. So it is not true that you can like eat five steaks a day of protein on top of a normal diet and be like, it's protein, bro. There's no way I can gain fat from it. That's fucking wrong. But in some situations and generally on average, protein is a little bit less likely to cause fat gain when eaten calorie for calorie, carbs a little bit more likely, and fats the most likely. So already we have a problem because most of the people that say carbs are really bad for weight uh, gain and they make you gain tons of fat and carbs cause fat gain, they're almost always people that are super supportive of relatively high fat diets. And that's kind of saying that, you know, oh, where are we going to go with this analogy? Your truck makes a lot of noise, but my motorcycle that makes 10 decibels more noise is not a problem. Come on. And also, people with loud motorcycles, what is it that you're trying to tell the rest of us? That you're tough? That you're not to be fucked with? Or do maybe you just need a hug? Folks, if you have a motorcycle and you like to have the motorcycle that makes lots of noise, the Harley Davidson cruiser types, uh, if you see me anywhere, come, come give me a hug, bro. We'll hug it out. In any case, number two, what actually causes fat gain and net weight gain is eating more calories than you expend, regardless of whether or not those calories come from proteins, carbs, or fats, or in almost every case, a combination of those. So for almost everyone, it just doesn't matter where the extras come from. So for example, if you eat your normal diet of 2,300 calories that keeps you at whatever body weight you're at, 171 pounds, and then you decide to throw in an, into that day an extra 100 grams of carbs in the form of Pixie sticks that you, of course, snort. Not sure pixie sticks. Scott, the video guy, is there another way to take in pixie sticks that does not involve snorting them? No. Not that I know of. And uh, or you say, you know what? I'm just going to have an extra chicken breast, mostly protein. Or you have an extra globo butter, my favorite source of fat. You will gain almost the identical amount of weight above your maintenance value. If the calories are equated, the weight gain is going to be almost identical. And as a matter of fact, by a small margin, we can expect over time that the globo butter actually gains you the most weight, pixie stick, dust, not snorted, but actually consumed, gains the second, and potentially the chicken breast gains the least by the teeniest, tiniest little margin, right? You could say at this point, but hold on, what about the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity? Doesn't insulin go up when you eat carbs? Doesn't insulin make you gain fat? Those are both true, but when insulin goes up and there are carbohydrates around, it shuttles the carbohydrates into the cells and can make you fatter than if you didn't eat those carbohydrates. 
if you have lots of fat floating around, then the insulin opens up the fat cells and it actually helps transport all the nutrients in. So once the carbohydrates are gone, instead of using them for energy, they're trapped somewhere else. You've got fats floating around and then the fats are more likely than be it stored as the extra. Either way you slice it, whether it's insulin pulling in carbs or the fats floating in by themselves through a variety of other mechanisms, insulin or not, the extra nutrients in your bloodstream in healthy non-diabetic people will end up getting into your fat cells anyway. And if they're not getting into your fat cells, you are in really, really deep shit, huge health problems. You're like a ketoacidotic or something like that. You need to go to the hospital. Right? The carbohydrate insulin model of obesity is wrong. It's been demonstrated wrong in a almost universal body of incredibly well done studies that have been done for 40 or 50 years now, such that the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity versus the caloric model of obesity being wrong is common agreed upon knowledge in academic circles in nutrition. The people that will make you believe that is not the case are keto zealots that are very famous for selling keto books and having keto podcasts and shit like that. Jason Fung or something like that. That's one of those guys. Um, Ludwig, I forget what his first name is. Uh, another one of those guys. There's like four or five guys that are super low-carb, anti-carb people, and they make lots of noise, and they are in wild disrepute in the academic community in the circle in which uh, we're concerned with, with adipogenic nutritional interventions. Now, that is not to say that low-carb dieting is bad. It is absolutely a great way to eat and stay healthy if that's what you're into. No problem. But we can't say high-carb eating is bad and adipogenic because within the context of a controlled calorie diet, it is not. So if you are ducking every carb that comes your way, like bullets in the matrix, sorry for the focusing problem, Scott the video guy, but here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, you guys remember that shit when he got sort of shot a little bit in the leg and then he fell and I was like, he's dead for sure. And then Trinity saved him. Yeah, good times. If you're doing that shit, but you are pac manning that's like the world is coming to a fucking end more like you're gonna try out for sumo wrestling soon, then you, kind sir, are guilty of a mild case of what the French called a les bullshit. And they say it so well. So in any case, be active, be healthy, control your total food intake, eat a diet of any combinations really, as long as you hit the minimums of proteins, carbs, or fats that you like, neither proteins, nor carbs, nor fats, are particularly more adipogenic than the other, or particularly more bad for your health than the other. Focusing on that is going to lead you down tons of blind alleys. Folks, thank you for tuning in. Again, if you are a cruiser motorcyclist, I'll see you in the real world. And we're going to hug. And we could even kiss, uh, depending on how I'm feeling that day and how you're looking. See you next time.